Hi, everybody. So today I want to talk about trust because trust is one of the biggest areas affected when it comes to betrayal. And I look at trust as a brick wall. And this brick wall can take 10, 20, 30, 40 years to be built and to be constructed. And it can be taken down in a matter of moments. And how does trust get to be rebuilt again, brick by brick by brick, slowly, consistently, and just, you know, over over time, it cannot be rushed. It is, you know, when people say trust is sacred, don't mess with trust. It's because it is so hard to rebuild with that, especially with that same person after that, after us, you've been betrayed. But we look at it and say, okay, well, you know, after a betrayal experience, I don't trust my betrayer. I don't even trust myself because how did I not see this, know this, feel this? And so it leaves us with this sense of insecurity. We don't feel, we don't feel safe because, you know, first of all, when, when it comes to the other people, if the people we trusted the most prove untrustworthy, who do we trust when the ones we'd run to when other people are causing harm are in fact the ones causing the harm? Where do we go? So the combination of not being able to trust or not feeling safe enough to trust the person who hurt us and not even feeling safe and comfortable with our own judgment puts us in a in a really weird place. So how can, and I get this question all the time, can I ever trust again and how can I ever trust again? And, and the answer is you can. It takes work, it takes time, but you can. And I, I sort of have this really simple uh now, when I mean simple, it doesn't mean easy, it just means simple, um, recipe of how to rebuild trust. And, it, and it's a few steps. And the way that I've seen it work well is in this in this order and in this process. The first stage, the first stage is learning to trust in the simplest things, the simplest things, like the sun will rise every day. You know, the sun will set every day. And what you do is you choose something that you just you just know for sure will happen and in knowing that that will happen and then it does you can learn to trust that you know if you have maybe you have a maybe you have a dog and you say my dog will when i when i pet my dog my dog will wag his or her tail and then they do so something that is just so simple and small that you could at least say, okay, you know what? I wasn't sure, but then I saw it and it's true and it's real. And that's the first step. And then from there, you can start learning. The next step I, I, I like to implement is now learning to trust in ourselves again. Now, here's the thing. What my, what my study showed was every single woman in my study, in order for us to get it all done and the, the first stage that that I saw with everybody in in uh, the study was we had this really strong leaning on like imagine four legs of a table the if the four legs of the table are uh, mental physical emotional and spiritual what I saw with everybody was we were really good at the mental and the physical and really not paying much attention to the emotional and the spiritual. So what that means is we it's like we have this big long to-do list and our bodies are taking us around to do it. But what I also saw was we turned down our intuition and that really makes sense because in order for us to get everything done, and this is no judgment, no blame. This is just what I saw consistently. In order for us to get everything done, being, um, you know, the the worker or the wife or the mom or the caretaker or the community, you know, whatever you're doing in your community, whatever it is, you have this exhaustive amount of things to do. In order to get it all done, we have to sort of turn down the feeling, turn up the the doing. And in doing that, we turn down our intuition. So, we need to learn how to turn that back up again because you know I remember one of my mentors saying your gut is about 10,000 times stronger and more perceptive than your mind. So what happens is our gut gives us a message and then our mind talks us out of it. So what we need to do is trust the messages of our gut. But when we're so busy or when we don't want to see something, we're not ready to see something, we turn it down. So what we need to do is learn again how to trust in ourselves. And it could mean something as simple as saying you're going, you're going to do something and doing it. 
I will, you know, I will go to the supermarket today and then you go to the supermarket today. You're like, wow, you know what? I can really trust myself. Or I will, you know, I'm going I'm to do that workout today. And then you do. Or, you know what? I am not going to reach for that bag of chips. And then you don't. Whatever it is. I mean, you just give yourself some sort of measure, whatever it means to you. I'm just giving some silly examples. But some measure of you say something and you do it. And when you do that consistently, you start rebuilding trust in yourself. And so now remember, the first one is learning to trust again in the simplest of things, as in the sun will rise each day, for example, right? The next one, you need to learn to trust in yourself again, saying you'll do something and then following ahead and doing it. The next one is learning how to strengthen your intuition so you regain that sense of safety. And that's that's sort of what I was talking about a little bit earlier where you're turning up your intuition, that gut feeling you get, that initial response you get, that initial feeling you get, you turn that up, you trust it, you believe in it. And when you practice that over time, what's going to happen is it's like it's like a muscle. It's going to get stronger and you're going to begin to rely on it. And that's a really good thing because trusting your gut is your inner wisdom. You're the highest and best version of yourself. It will never steer you wrong. I mean, think about all the experiences you've had in your life where you said, oh, if I only listened to my gut, if I only trusted, you know, my, my, my gut. And it's talking to us all the time. We just don't pay attention. We don't trust it. We don't listen. So we said the first one was uh, learning to trust in the simplest things, like the sun will rise. The next one is going to be uh, learning to trust in yourself again, which is saying you're going to do something and you're going to, and then doing it. The next one, learning how to strengthen your intuition. You just tune into the messages that your gut is telling you, that initial response, that initial reaction, and then don't talk yourself out of it. It's the mind that's going to talk yourself out of it. Your gut was right. Your mind talked you out of it. So trust in the message of of your highest inner wisdom because that's what your gut is. And then the last part of this is slowly and carefully learning to trust in others again. And think about it. Once you've learned to trust in the simplest things, like I keep using this example, the sun will rise, you you start believing in it, you start gaining a sense of safety right there, learning to trust in yourself again. You know what? I tr- I, be- I trust myself that when I when I say something, I'm going to do it. I have a sense of safety and security, just me in my own body with my own being. From there, now you're fine-tuning it. You're strengthening yourself. I'm going to strengthen my intuition, which I also call a BS meter. <laughs> so you're strengthening that BS meter. You get a sense someone is creepy or something doesn't feel right or that's a bad move. Trust that. Trust it. And then from there, because you've rebuilt that sense of safety, because you've you've built this this sense, greater sense of security, because now you have this BS meter that you've, you've sharpened and strengthened, you can slowly use that to learn how to trust in others again. Now, when it comes to learning to trust in others again, this is a slow process and don't rush it. And listen, don't feel badly. You may never give that trust blindly again. And that's okay. You may never, even for the person who betrayed you, you may never 150 million percent trust that person again. And that's okay. Be easy on yourself. You know, you've you've been, of course, you learned so much from this and, and all of it was to teach you certain incredible lessons that you now have. But you may be a little bit wary and that's okay. You're protecting yourself. But to not trust, whether in, you know, and if, if it doesn't feel right to trust that person again, you'll know. You need to feel a sense of safety and security. And if you don't, it's not even an option. I'm talking about rebuilding when you feel safe and when you feel it's, uh, the, you know, that person has absolutely changed and has learned their lesson and there's remorse and apology and restitution and all that stuff that makes you feel this is worthy of another chance. That's what I'm talking about. If you don't feel that, of course, you know, that's that's not in your best interest to do. But with other people going forward, when you're when your intuition is strengthened, when you trust yourself, you have that greater sense of safety and security. But, you know, will you always be a little bit careful, a little bit cautious? You may be, and that's okay. And that's okay. But to not trust again is a life half lived. 
You know, it's like, yes, we've learned to keep out the bad guys, but you don't want to keep out the good guys too. You want to have those beautiful, loving relationships again. And when you're always so guarded, then, you know, you're not going to get what you want and what you deserve. So as long as you've learned the lesson that you were meant to learn, maybe to reset those boundaries, maybe that you are so wonderful and loving and deserving and, and, and lovable, all of these things. Maybe you didn't get that lesson before and now you say, you know what, I will never accept X, Y, Z, you know, and I've learned so much more. Lesson learned and that's a beautiful lesson. So just to recap all of this, can you ever trust again? Of course you can, but it is a process and don't rush it at all. It starts with learning how to trust in the very simplest of things, learning how to trust in yourself again, strengthening your intuition so you gain that sense of safety and security, and then slowly and carefully using what you've learned and through that sense of security that you now feel to learn to trust in others again. Uh, If you enjoy these podcasts, please tell a friend because we want as many people as we can to uh, rebuild and feel safe and secure and whole and back in control after an experience with betrayal. I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.